Okay, so I have a little bit of time. So I'm going to read you a short excerpt from Sister Mine. And as I do, it's blending a bunch of things. So the opening quotation is actually from uh, Goblin Market by Christina Rossetti. Like two pigeons in one nest, folded in each other's wings, they lay down in their curtained bed like two blossoms on one stem. We'd had to be cut free of our mother's womb. She'd never been able to push the two-headed sport that was me and Abby out the usual way. Mom was still human at the time. My dad's family hadn't yet exiled her to the waters. After the C-section, just for a few days, she was kind of sidelined while she recovered. That gave dad's family the opening they needed to move in and take over, because from their perspective, things were a mess. Abby and I were fused, you see, conjoined twins. Abby's head, torso, and left arm protruded from my chest. We shared a liver, both kidneys, and three and three-quarters legs between us. We had two stomachs, two hearts, and four lungs, and enough colon for each of us to have a viable section come to that. Abby and I could have lived as we were, conjoined. Between us, we had what we needed. But here's the real kicker. Abby had the magic, and I didn't. Far as the family was concerned, Abby was one of them, though cursed as I was with the, tr with the tragic flaw of mortality. Abby and me, my mum, brought us that gift. You might say that my dad married outside the family. To hear some of them tell it outside the species. Most of his family would barely give mom the time of day while she was still around, despite the fact that she and her kin had done steward service to them for centuries, or rather because of it. Dad's family could have stood it if she were just some dalliance of dads, a bit of booty call. Even love might have been okay if they'd kept it to a dull roar. It wouldn't have been the first time that a celestial had knocked boots with the help. But no, mom and dad had to go and breed. Um, it's, it's a bit of both. Um, if I'm going to talk about sex in a young adult, I don't write actual sex scenes. If I do, I stop at you know, a discrete point. Um, in, with adult, I have no such limits. And that's more, I think, about who buys the books than who's reading them. But also in young adult, um, I tend to keep the focus more strongly on the protagonist and on their particular journey, which often for young adults is a journey of discovering self. So although there are broader um, world issues, um, and although my protagonist is very much aware of them, they, are, they come a bit through the filter of how do I operate in this, this world. <laughs> my colleagues behind you are laughing. Um, through a lot of arguments in bars at conventions. Um, <laughs> But generally, science fiction tends to deal with the effects on us and on the world of the fact that we make things. We make things, we make technologies, we make systems uh, such as legal systems. Um, fantasy tends to deal with the um, imaginative stories we tell ourselves about who we are and why we're here. Both of them are meta narratives in. in the fact that they tell stories about the stories we tell ourselves. So they are, in ways, um, modern myth-making.